What is the fastest way a room full of happy people turned mad? When it was announced our community bank was being acquired by Wells Fargo and 85% of people were going to lose their jobs. Edit, the announcement was made during the end of your manager's meeting where bonuses, Christmas party festivities, etc. were discussed. No bonuses, no Christmas party, most people just got severance for the holidays. Let me guess, the exec team who would have made the decision to be acquired made out just fine didn't they? One day at work we had an hour meeting followed by a planned pizza party as a reward for meeting some safety goal. They'd been telling us all week not to worry about food because they were getting pizza. Well after the meeting we're sitting around waiting for the pizza to get there when out boss comes in and tells us there was a failure of communication and no one actually ordered the pizza. If you want to see 50 factory workers go from excited to murder ready in less than a second that's what you tell them. In the spring of 1999, I went to a film festival that debuted a documentary about the gothic subculture called Sex, Death and Eyeliner. It was made by one of the guys who made Trekkies and was very similar to that movie. It poked fun at the lunatic fringe elements of the subculture, but overall it was pretty respectful and everyone in attendance, mostly a toned-down group of goths, enjoyed it. At the end of the film the producer did a canned A, and during it mentioned that he was having a difficult time trying to sell it to the right people. The Columbine massacre had happened just a few weeks earlier and for a while the media was trying to portray the shooters as goths. A lot of companies were interested in buying it, and the producer was very concerned about not letting it get into the hands of someone who would try to portray goths negatively. The final question of the canned A was from a guy who went off on a tirade defending the shooters of Columbine, and explaining how he understood how they felt and why they did what they did. The entire room went from laughing and feeling very good to overwhelmingly pissed off at this guy and booing at him. Completely killed the mood of the evening. The couple hosting the party got into a fight with each other in front of everyone so much so that she slapped one side of his face, then expected guests to take sides. It ruined everything people left. Everybody left? Well I guess they picked a side after all huh? At my work we host weddings. A few years ago the groom and one of our waitresses were caught having sex on the ninth green by the maid of honor. The 180 degree turn of drunk happy people to incredibly angry drunk people was insane, the families were screaming at each other the bride was crying, the mother of the bride was crying, the dad was being held back cause he was gonna kill the groom, understandable. We ended up calling the police, they came and escorted the groom's family out the door, some of the smart groom's family took off right away when they heard. It all happened within an hour. We call the incident night pudding. During bar trivia the question was what was the biggest fish in Finding Nemo the answer was blue whale. Whales aren't fish. People started yelling at the guy that whales are mammals. The said it was in the water so it counted as a fish. I asked if the dentist was a fish since he was in the water. That Applebee's just barely avoided a riot that night. People don't play around with bar trivia. It was serious business. Regular teams had plaques with their name on it hung on the wall. Pub quiz, everyone was a bit boozed up. Announcer, who was universally hated and considered a massive bellend by everyone, made the controversial call to disallow a debatably correct answer. The answer given by everyone was Jessica Ennis, the Olympic athlete from England. But she had gotten married two weeks before the quiz, and so her official name was Jessica Ennis Hill, which was the only accepted answer. Two teams actually walked out after shouting abuse at the guy running the quiz and everyone else booed. The people that answered Ennis Hill are the ones that Google the answers. My extended family had a day at the lake. All day was nothing but happiness until we started cleaning up. Half of the family were on the lake and decided to play a prank on the rest of us who were getting ready to go. They sent a voicemail that they were sinking and didn't have life jackets, there were kids on the boat who couldn't swim. My grandpa believed it, and when none of the nearby boat owners would let him borrow one to save his family, he stole a boat and went out to look for them. He of course found them safe and sound, 
and there was a huge fistfight when everyone got back. Some of them haven't spoken to each other since, and it's been years. Who the hell thinks telling someone their family is dying is a prank? Yeah that's not shit you joke around about. Grandpappy was right to be pissed. At a friend's funeral who had committed suicide. Everyone was somber and respectful as the service went on and the clergy talked about heaven and whatnot. The last speaker comes up and says well she may not be allowed in heaven because of the suicide and how that's a terrible sin yada yada yada. A huge portion of the family starts sobbing uncontrollably and some outright walk out. Those that stayed were super angry and began to threaten the speaker. He had to be escorted from the funeral home by security. Edit. By security I mean employees of the funeral home, not the armed guards at clubs. From what I understand of this guy, he was trying to discourage copycat suicides by not glorifying it and saying my friend was definitely in heaven like it solved all her problems. Certainly not the best way to go about it. They announced that in another 30 minutes there would be another announcement about the status of our delayed flight. Edit, I am so sorry for all you poor souls who have dealt with long delays. My heart goes out to you. And yes technically this doesn't fit because some people were already unhappy, but this was the tipping point for most at the airport that day. Brazilians watching the World Cup. I was cheering for Germany that match, and that still feels too soon. I was cheering for Germany and didn't know if I was celebrating a replay of the second goal or already the third. And that feeling didn't go away until the fifth goal.